Yeah. Certain teas. Puked certain on, teas. shit on, jizzed on, you name it. Yeah. It's, that anywhere room is you look, anywhere you look in that hotel room, filthy. You think the curtains are Absolutely safe? Filthy. Think again. Nothing again. Curtains are the one thing they don't clean, actually. And that's why this episode is brought to you by Airbnb. <laughs> 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 If the yeah. hotel room's bad, how about someone's house? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's a very clean and orderly hotel room. But there was a legal pad and pen on the desk. It seemed to be a single page removed and a message written on it. To those who I love the most, please forgive me for the worst possible thing I could have done. Most of all, I'm sorry to my son. I know deep down inside that God will let me in. So it's a suicide. He's closed. Cut and dry suicide, suicide right? Boom. Got a half bottle of wine. You got a suicide note. Guy cuts his wrist in the bathtub. Got an old Millie, right? You got to be pretty right? depressed to be drinking old Milwaukee. Let's be honest. I'll drink, I drink old Milwaukee all all day. Ooh, that makes sense, though. That lines up. Yeah. I have to. It's the cheapest beer I can get. <laughs> <laughs> I drink one of these from Phillips. It's like it's like almost expensive as a bottle of wine. Yeah, it's a strong, though, too. No, that, that one's only a 5%. Oh, okay. Right. Anyways, after the, the police showed up and noted there was an absence of a struggle, right? So we just said it's like a meticulous well, route. Oh, yeah. It's a meticulous I could argue job, that cops. there was this absence of any kind of detective work because they just walked in. They went, oh, easy Sunday at the office, boys. Your classic hotel suicide. Walked in. Third this week. No sign of struggle. No sign of forced entry. Yeah. Um, there was a presence of alcohol. They seen the bottle of wine, the old Milwaukee can, and they said, oh, God damn, that's a straight forward suicide. Yeah. No big deal. The police went and interviewed other members or other people that were staying in the hotel at the time and revealed that no one had really seen or heard anything suspicious. Uh, they contacted authorities in Fairfax, Virginia, who said they would not, they would notify Castellero's family. So he dies. They come. It's ruled a suicide. It's not, hey, boy, I'm like, surprised it's even a case fall. It sounded pretty straightforward to me, right? It's pretty easy, yeah. yeah. So later on that Saturday, Casalero's body was then transferred to the funeral home, where it was embalmed without an autopsy or his family's consent. What? It also, which is extremely interesting about this, that is actually illegal in the state of Virginia. It's, I imagine it's illegal in most places to just take a body without consent from the family and just and bomb and remove all it. the it's, organs it's, and drain the blood and it's kind of one of those things where it's i guess it would kind of fall under like you know whatever the last wishes of the person was like if if he wanted to be open casket or if he wanted to be cremated right it's like you were like taking someone's basically <laughs> last, last okay open ca- a casket but it's definitely not burying him in a short sleeve yeah, yeah, yeah. Long sleeves. Oh, <laughs> Dios mio. <laughs> Look at that well, one. That's weird that they did it without the family's consent because they obviously told the family right away that they found their family member deceased in the bathtub, right? You would th- they would call them right away. Absolutely, like, right? That would be f- notif- notify next to kin. It's standard procedure, which they did 48 hours after the body had already been embalmed. And, and, like, let's just be clear. Like, I kind of thought was, like, well, maybe they had a hard time identifying him. They did. No, his wallet he, was in the hotel. had his wallet <laughs> with his ID. <laughs> they, like, they, they knew who it was for whatever reason. Uh, they're like, ah, oh, this one just slipped through the cracks. <laughs> like, hey, did you call, call the family? I was like, I thought you were calling the family, Chief. Like, oh, Johnson, you call the family? I call the family. I, have you call the family? I will say as someone who's made that phone call. Not something you want to do. It's I, hard. I, 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 I've, not, I wouldn't, I've never had to make it, and I would imagine it's a very difficult thing to do. I mean, it has to be done. But it's your job. It's your job. Yeah, you yeah. have to. You can't I, w- it. I just give a deadpan. Just quick. Yes. Hello, Miss Casalero. Your husband is dead. Goodbye, bye. On the bright side, the hotel <laughs> yeah. room was extremely clean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, he was drinking old Milwaukee and bottled yeah. wine, but uh, bye. Yeah. He no. was, uh, <laughs> just getting graphic detail. Right? So two days Dan, after... Dan, Dan, calm down. We're not going to get into graphic detail. Yes, right, we are. Calm down. But we are. Good. So yeah, two days after he was found dead and embalmed, they notify his brother. First, his brother, uh, Tony. He's like, 
no, no one told me that my brother was dead. And not because he, he was in like his account. He's like at the hospital. He like gets a call. He's like from his mom. His mom's like, hey, he's like, what's going on? He's like, Tony's dead. He's like, why? When? What happened? She's like, he died two days ago. He's like, wait, what? This is unbelievable. They yeah, like just called me. And he's, he's blown away. Like he's at work and he's a doctor. Dr. Tony. Yeah. So his brother's a doctor and so is his father. So oh, got, you know he was the black sheep. Eh? Had to be. It's a fam. That's a family pedigree here, and he's yeah. out here chasing stories. Oh, he's an investigatory journalist. Also uh, moonlighted like, as a treasure yeah. hunter. I don't know if you guys saw that, but <laughs> was what treasure was he? He hunting? literally quit college to go search for fucking buried treasure in like South America. That's pretty bad. Yeah, I would say so too. He lived a way more fun life. Way more, hundred yeah. percent. Well, up you until you up know, until like his, his dad, grizzly, like his grizzly demise. Stuff, he goes. So he's like, Danny or Daniel, how's uh, your stories? How's your, uh, your stories you're writing? He's like, Dad, I'm a journalist. I write papers. And he's like, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Going good? Good? Those paying the bills? So, yeah, you can always get your PhD. <laughs> you, can, you can always go back, even if you're 40. No big deal. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, his brother Tony learns about his death and how he like commit. He's deemed suicide by cutting like – he cut himself. He's cut his wrists. And he, his brother was not convinced that his brother would have done that. He says he didn't really have a history of depression as far as they knew. Uh, so he demanded a, he demanded an autopsy as he well, should. He had good reason to though. <laughs> like yeah. with his – the last conversation he had with his brother, that right there would be like, no, no, no. Listen, this is – something's happened. Something foul is going on. Well, even, as, even aside from that last conversation that we're going to touch on – he knew his brother, and his brother was one thing super fucking squeamish with like needles and blood. So at the second they're like, he slashed his wrist. He's like, <laughs> my brother wouldn't have done that. He like, he he couldn't have. He's so t- like terrified of the sight of blood like, and like needles. There's I just cannot fathom that he would do this. Thing is, saying if if he killed himself, he he thinks if if it was. If his brother did kill himself, he's like, he would have done it in a different way in his mind. He's like, there's no way he's going to cut himself that gruesomely. Oh, absolutely. Like, I, you know what? Not to say that we don't know the mindset. Mind, you know, the mind goes to a lot of dark places when somebody's contemplating suicide. Sure. Right? We, so we don't know what kind of mind frame he was in. But the fact that before he left, he spoke with his brother and he had told his brother that he, that he had frequent harassing phone calls late at night that some some of them were were threatening his life and that if something were to happen to him while he was in Martinsburg it would not be an accident oh so <laughs> right it's like what? okay so not even mentioning the fact this guy's fucking terrified at the sight of blood super squeamish both his parent his, his dad and his brother are doctors they've said like we've tried to run to you know we've tried to do blood work we've tried to have him in refuses to get needles forgets Hates to get it. blood work done guy like wants to faint at the sight of blood right and he's also getting these threatening phone calls and being like hey listen if something happens to die. me it's it's like intentional this is not an accident and that's not I where the fucking that. weirdness stops, boys. We're just getting fucking stared at. No, I mean because we've we've just we presented this as a it's a, it's a seems like a regular case at face value without knowing any of the details. Guy is in a hotel room, cuts his wrists or whatever. But no, it gets crazier. <clears throat> so at the funeral, so the funeral is this just, is my favorite part. By the way, this is my favorite part. And just so you know, if either of you to die before me this will be happening at your yeah, funeral absolutely just so you know okay i hope so i will hire people <laughs> just to fuck with fuck with the family or what and then i will start the room i'll be like who is that right so at his funeral friends and family acquaintances i don't know where a highly decorated military officer like in full in full like like Dress it uniform. Pulls up in a bl- dress uniform like in with a, the medals and everything. In a black sedan. In a black sedan. Pulls I up was, first. I thought it was a limousine is what I read. I, well, like I a, heard like, like a, a stretch black sedan. There, there was a couple different. but Yeah, a town and country or like a, a stretch or like a, it was, a, luxu- boys, it was a luxury ride. Classy, classy yeah. ride. He shows up. He's got 
He's got the. F hey guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10 minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks guys. Enjoy the next video.